All right, morning guys. We're back from the NRHA Derby, giving the horses a few days off. And uh, today I've got a special treat. I'm gonna learn something today. Uh, you know, always trying to improve. And this actually comes from Karen. So tell you the sh long story in a short amount of time. Week before the Derby, I was riding Apache outside and uh, Karen's watching and she's like, man, every time you spin that horse, it looks like your saddle's like, like you're sitting on the horse's neck. And I'm like, oh, I know. It's, I always have to get off, pull the saddle back and I've played around with different pads, stuff like that. And I just thought that's just the way it was. Well, anyway, it kind of got my mind thinking and I immediately called up Andy Mashke who makes all of my saddles. And I thought, you know what? I need to get the expert here and I need to try to learn because it's one of those things where, you know, we get detailed with everything that we do. And then, you know, saddles is not one that I put a lot of thought into other than if it was comfortable for me. So uh, we've got Andy here today. He was nice enough to come out, bring some equipment, and we're going to go through some horses and see if they fit. Andy, how's it going, man? Good morning. Good, very good. You know, I called you on the phone and I was telling you, you know, asking you questions, and then I, you know, I called Casey Geary and he told me how much he uses you with the trees and whatnot. And, and I gotta be honest, I think I've been completely missing the boat, so to speak, on saddle fit to horses. I've always just con been concerned if the saddle was comfortable to me, and more or less kind of if the saddle fit and playing around with pads. And I think back now, just about every custom saddle that you've built for me, you've always asked, so what about the tree? Like, what kind of horse? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I remember. It's great, and you'd be like, okay. All right, I'll make what you ask. We talked a little bit. I need you to show me Absolutely. what, what. I mean, obviously the saddles are beautiful. We can see my two show saddles. I've got some of my other stuff out here, but what about underneath the hood? Underneath the hood is like <clears throat> a frame, which is the saddle tree. And I have 36 saddle trees in my program. Um, utilized mostly here in the US, about six to seven, eight trees that are the most common trees that fit the majority of the modern type reining horse. In Europe, it's a little bit different story because there's liability laws. You know, if you sell a saddle that doesn't fit, they, uh, you know, the horse owner can sue you. So they're very, very careful what they put on a horse so it, it fits perfectly or nearly perfectly. But here it's a little bit different. You know, we don't have like one horse, one rider. It is a trainer with uh, multiple horses in his barn, now, lots right. of horses. And if you would have a single saddle for each horse, that capital is like tools that it's not economical. Right. So we want to find something that covers probably like three, four different types of horses. Okay. And I think we can achieve that today. What about these saddles here? So I've, I pulled out a bunch of my work saddles mm -hmm. and my show saddles and a couple of my non-pro saddles. And we were talking earlier, like they're all the same tree. Yes, it's like have a shoe size for all your kids, one shoe size. And even, or let's compare your neighbors, your friends' kids. Yes. They're all like six years old, they started playing soccer, playing basketball, and they need shoes. And their feet are all different. The height of them are different. You know, each kit is different. There are some that are similar and they might be able to wear the shoes of the other kid, but you know, there might be a taller guy there, the same age, that wants to play basketball. He's totally t differently built. And we need a different shoe for that guy. Right. And it's the same with the saddle trees. We need different trees for different types of horses. So I've got the same tree for every horse. Yeah, and that, okay. you're not the only trainer. You're okay. not the only one. You're, uh, of all of them that I know, they, there's a couple exceptions, but they're all similar structure. Yeah. Well, we need to change that today. Well, all right, where do we start? Maybe let's let's start with uh, Champ here. When yeah. you fit it, are you doing it? Do we need a pad or are we just throwing the tree on well, first? First of all, I wanted to see how the bar uh, conforms to the back in okay. general. But uh, trying to saddle tree without us with a, without a saddle pad would be trying shoes without socks. That makes you sense. Know. And I would like to try your tree on first. Okay. And then show you what uh, the other, because you have one saddle that has a different uh, tree in it. That's okay. a trophy saddle. And I want to show you what the differences are. All right, great. And what we're looking for. So 
I like this horse very much because it has some withers. Yeah. And it's not extremely high in the back and so that the saddle will run downhill. So I'm, I really like this type of saddle. Now, first of all, we need to talk about lift. How much lift do you think that back will get when you sit on it, collect him, drops his head and you use your spurs? I mean, is it, I got no idea. Is it like that much? It looks See, about right. a mistake that uh, some saddle makers make today is they're not considering that the reigning horse has changed in the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. The way they are collected, the way they carry their head and the neck, and it's all down. And the back is lifted. It, we're not stopping like this anymore. Right. So when I put that tree on it, here, what I noticed first with this horse, this bar is very straightforward here. Uh -huh. So it's pinching the shoulder. Mm. And that's what I'm and, afraid I have on a lot of them. And because it's not very wide, so you have only maybe two thirds of coverage here. You see that finger, that should be also. That should be snug to the earth. Yes, relatively. The fact that this is sitting here and here is not a problem because in the raining, when you start riding that horse, you see, ah, you see what happened now? Yes, everything. Now it looks better. Yeah. And that's what a lot of those saddle makers now, nowadays don't consider. They think that horse has like a relaxed back. And that might be okay for a trail rider. Right. Or for a range rider. You know, for somebody that rides out on the range and then gathers cattle, towers. Yeah. So that's a con completely different concept. The reining horses are different, even different from the cutting horses. You know, even they have their backs down. Right. Even though the, the neck is straight down. Right. You know, so you see what that saddle tree does when it, when you're on it. So this now you have better coverage here, okay? And it's not poking here. It is, too, but it's too tight here in the front. When now when that horse is moving his shoulder blade, either you squeeze the shoulder blade and restrict it from reaching out, especially spinning, uh, spinning and rolling roll back. back, yeah. Or what it could do too. It slides back here. I have that happen all the time, Andy, and then I put a breast collar on to try to compensate. But what that's, what, what you do then is you squeeze the horse's shoulders. Yeah, well, it makes sense now because I remember telling you, like, hey, Andy, make me a breast collar and a you know, back cinch or flank cinch, I think mm -hmm. you call it, and you're like, well, the saddle fits, why do you need it? And I'm thinking, I wasn't even paying attention, honestly. I was like, what do you mean? Just make, the, make me the breast collar and the back cinch, why? Now it's coming back to me. We went to all this detail on the top and I didn't even think about underneath yeah. and you were just being good, taking care of the customer. Like, okay, if that's what you want, then Well, maybe I it. need to be more, uh, you know. I think you need to tell me, no, yeah. we're, not, <laughs> we're not doing that. But I don't want to disrespect the trainer, you know. You no, 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 yeah. But uh, it's all about, you know, trying to make things more comfortable for the horse. So this is a different tree here. This is a different, this is the other one in that uh, uh, trophy saddle. It fits a little bit better here. It has a little rock in it, but I like that. Here's a misconception. A lot of people think when they cinch the saddle and, uh -huh. and it comes up on the back, that's a bad fitting tree. It is not. What it does, <laughs> when, you, when you sit in it, when you sit in it yeah. as a, an experienced rider, okay. you balance that tree, okay? And what it does then, see how that opens up this part yeah. here? Yeah. You know? That bar, when you sit here, that bar allows that horse to move his shoulders better. I'm laughing because that what you just said about when the saddle sits, if it's up on the back, mm -hmm. I, my old train of thought was it doesn't fit. Yeah, it's a misconception because we, in the Western saddle uh, construction, we have the rigging here. Can I grab that tree there? Yeah, yeah. And I think this is so cool. I never really, I never really spent much time, at no time, Knowing the details of this, I thought I don't need to worry about this. I've trained the horse, and it is what it is. But um, this is a, this is this is really pretty interesting. If the saddle doesn't fit right, think about it. And then you know, I'm not a small guy. That's a lot of weight, specifically, and that's what I'm after. Specifically, right here, trying to get that you know where it's not getting compressed. So what do we got here? So I put a rigging on this tree in the part of the ground seat, so a person could basically put some fenders in, stirrup leathers and could ride in this, cinch it up, and then we see really what's happening underneath without all the saddle ah. around it, you know. Yeah. So what we're doing right now is when we cinch it down here, mm -hmm. okay, that, that will come up eventually. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the back. 
there's certain rules how to cinch your saddle, as you know. If you over cinch it, it stays up there. Right. And when you sit in it, you put even more pressure in it. So just enough that the horse, you can get in the saddle without the saddle going left and right. Yeah. And then when you sit in it, and the Western saddles are made for a back cinch. Mm -hmm. That's what they're made for. Okay. Because we don't have a rigging like in dressage saddles, where the rigging is underneath your stirrup leather, which is here. So it's more. They don't have a bar, they have pads underneath. Sure. So it's a whole different concept. Or buckaroo saddles, they have a flat plate rigging, which is one piece that goes from here, down, and here. So the saddle pulls front and back. Mm -hmm. About 70% in the front, 30% in the back, so they don't come up in the back. But flank cinches are okay. Yeah. More and more trainers ride with flank cinches. Yeah. And, and then I see a lot of them, down. though, they ride around and they're hanging this low below the belly, and it's like, it's just decoration. That is, that is decoration, it is dangerous. Yeah. You know, I've seen where a horse stopped and stepped in it. Stepped in it, yeah. And then it was a wreck and it was really bad. Right. So, if you cinch it that you can get good, like maybe two hands in it, you know, just loose enough mm -hmm. that the horse doesn't get in trouble. So that's my theory of fitting a saddle tree. Okay. And I think it seems to work. 